Michael Jordan. All right, everybody. Hello, everyone. Namaste. Namaste at home, everybody. You guys uh, here? Come to your mats. They were partying while we were gone. Uh, at home, welcome to the Versatile Warrior. Warrior. Nice to have you. Uh, guys here, welcome to the Versatile Warrior. Okay, let's go ahead and sit down onto the knees. And Tamar, show them how to bring the knees together and untuck the toes and sit the heels on the feet and lift the chest up. In this class today, I just want to kind of take you through, this is your first class with us after the gathering class, and that was at night, and it was more of an introduction. This is really the first class, I would think, of the program, and the Versatile Warrior is just that. We're going to just do kind of a little bit of everything that the practice has to offer. So enjoy that, and it's just a taste for the practice. Do what you can do. Take breaks when you need to take breaks. See this pose here? This is a great pose. It's called the Hero Pose. And it could literally be a hero for you to stop in your tracks, take a moment, maybe keep watching a video, see what you like about it, and pick up with us when you, when you need to. And it's never too early, never too often to be in this position. So keep that in mind. So you guys here, uh, welcome as well. And go ahead and close your eyes for a moment. And just begin to breathe where you notice your breathing. Since the moment you were born, you've been breathing and Hopefully it won't stop today. Uh, but maybe this is the first time you actually start enjoying the breath and start to notice the breath. And as you begin to notice the breath, the breath is a barometer to the mind a lot. And as you move through your life, you'll start to notice when you get challenged, the breath can become shortened. And you notice when you relax, the breath becomes vast. And what we're gonna do in this practice is challenge you, but see if you can re maintain a vast, free, deep breath relative to what you're doing at the moment through the nose. If you can't breathe through the nose, breathe through the mouth. So we're gonna go ahead and start moving around a little bit. We're gonna walk our hands right out in front of us to we're on our hands and knees. And again, even now, did you notice you've lost the breath already? It's not unusual. And once you've noticed something, come back. And we're gonna take the right leg and, and stretch it out behind us, right leg straight back. And with that, I want you, as you, as you do that, push to your right heel. And for me, that really engages the right quadriceps. I feel that, so something more subtle. Can you feel it working from the belly? You may not notice it yet, but I bet now when you take the left fingertips and reach them out into a handshake position, you'll probably notice the left arm isn't so heavy but that right leg is heavier relative. And you may feel that the support comes from the belly button, so use that, or from the low belly, so use that. And I noticed as I got more advanced at the practice, that it would come to the right side of the belly button. And while that's just like, well, it's kind of a mundane discovery, it's a discovery. Left arm is reaching for length, right leg is pressing for length. Now, where's the length at? Where is those two limbs? but it's also the space between the vertebrae and creating space. Where's the strength? Well, inherently, you'll feel it as you lift up a little bit, you'll feel that little slight burn, that's new muscles cooking. And then the right arm is awfully straight. And then just for kicks, maybe the left bicep is high as the left ear, one more moment within reason, and set it all down. It wasn't too easy, was it? Let's take the other leg behind us. That would be the left leg. Now, before you just, a lot of times we'll do this and we'll just kind of fling the right arm out in front of us to feel that, enjoy that action. When we, when's the next time today you're gonna to do this other than right now? And right fingertips out in front. And then once again, I'm just looking for length. And while I'm looking for length, guess what I find? I find strength. Because it takes strength to create length in this practice. And what a w better way to get strong than to get long. And take one more inhale and lift it all up another inch until it feels really magnificent. And then set it down because you can always take so much magnificence at once. <laughs> then on your next inhale, drop your belly, lift your tail, lift your heart up. That's called the cow stretch for obvious reasons. And then this is more obvious, round your back into what we call the cat. Mm -hmm. And then move like that. You guys here in this room, continue to move at your own cadence. If you're at home, if that's really foreign to you, just look at these movements and notice, not only just notice them, I'll tell you, when they inhale, 
the tail goes up, the heart goes forward, and the shoulders roll down the back. Did you hear that? And when they exhale, it's the opposite action. And it's the appropriate breath with appropriate action. If you don't believe me, reverse that. Try to exhale when you arch and try to inhale when you round. It, it just doesn't work. And then from there, we're gonna mellow out of that cat-cow stretch and we're gonna take it right back into a downward facing dog. Downward facing dog. So in the gathering class, if you couldn't see it so clearly last night being we were outside, here's a clear view of the hands and clear view of the feet. Because in yoga, what is supporting the weight is the foundation of the pose. If they were in headstands, it'd be the crown of the head. If it's in handstands, it'd be the hands. So hands and feet. Hands are about shoulders distance apart. If you're too wide, let's say your hands are on the outside of your yoga mat, you could easily hyperextend the shoulder joint. Feet are about hips distance apart, although that's a little more negotiable. If you got really tight hamstrings, maybe you could open feet a bit wider. So if you square your feet, look past the middle, look past the second or third toe and see if you can find your heels. If you can't find your heels, you're on the right path. If your heels are quite evident, move your legs, your feet out or in to find the heels hidden. Now, I know you're getting tired at home, the arms start to burn by now. And then if your last little thing about the feet, if your legs, if your heels are six inches off the floor, now your heels never have to get to the floor because that's all about the structure of the foot. It's not about flexibility. But to get more leverage, you may want to walk the feet a couple inches towards the hands to get more down pressure through those Achilles down pressure through the center of the heel. So the heel striving to the floor, if it ever gets there, towards the floor, if it ever gets there or not, it's not a big deal, but give it that action. Let's float to plank position. You know, funny enough, you, you get into one position and you're like, okay, I had enough of this. And then you kind of get to the next position and that's nice for a second. Then you realize I had enough of that too. And eventually you gotta sit there and confront it or you gotta face it, because it's confronted you. And in yoga, we don't run. We don't hide. Actually, in yoga, we hunt it. We track it, we stalk it, we look for it. Downward facing dog. What is it we're looking for? In this practice, we're looking for a revelation. We're looking for truth, not the magazine's vision of truth, my truth. How am I gonna find it? Only through exploration. How am I going to explore it? Well, I got to shut my pie hole. I got to turn off the TV. I got to leave my friends behind once in a while. Inhale plank position. I got to get, I got to get with myself. Take another big inhale, down dog. Huh. Yeah. Watch how fluidly these students move. They're like cats, everybody. We're gonna do it one more time if you don't mind. Plank position. Everybody here, we're gonna bear, we're gonna, we're gonna honor you guys at home. Everyone here, don't bring your knees under your waistband, but bend your knees until they magically touch the floor. That's the perfect place for them. Lift your feet and cross your ankles. Pull your heart forward. Slowly bend your elbows, touch your chin. Slower than that, push back up where you came from, keep the knees on the floor. Now, if you ever see a practice that we do in the Yoga Warrior 365 that's a push-up, this is, I do this all the time, I put my knees down because what happens then, I can just isolate the muscles I want, the triceps, the shoulders, and the chest, and also supports my low back. Now, in this next one, we're gonna lower all the way down, then we're gonna do something called Cobra, so watch. Take a big inhale. You guys lower all the way to the belly. When you get there, lay flat and extend your legs without pressing your arms straight. Matter of fact, everyone in the room, look at the front edge of your yoga mat and bring your fingertips off to the hardwood floor like you're about to do Sphinx. These kids here know how to do Sphinx, so they're gonna do Sphinx. Climb onto the forearm. Ryan, take your hands out in front of you. Make sure your elbows are far enough in front of your breastbone. Now, this is what Cobra kinda looks like. Close your eyes for a minute. Try to pull your breastbone forward. So see where your biceps are in front of your breastbone? Try to Velcro the top of the feet into the floor. And then from those feet, 
pull your belly button through your biceps. Ain't gonna happen, is it? But you're gonna go in that direction. And then pull those shoulders down your back and try to take the tips of the shoulder blades. This is a little bit of advanced stuff. I'm not gonna expect you to pull it off. But take the tip of the shoulder blades and pull it through the heart. That looks like cobra. That feels like cobra. Different from up dog. Now drop the chin to the floor. Slide the hands under the shoulders. Now the pose is going to kind of look like the same thing. In other words, I'm trying to teach you not to come up so high in cobra. Inhale, cobra. We'll do it a set of three. Forehead to four. Now what I notice, if you don't come up high enough, it's too hard. If you come up too high, it's too intense. Inhale. So you got to find what one of those bears said. Just right. Forehead to floor. And we're going to do one more and go back to down dog. Inhale, lift and linger. And then when you're ready, tuck the toes, pull over those knees, downward facing dog. Some people like to push up from there. For me, I, I cheat. I pivot over the knees like a tripod and come back to down dog. And that's good to kind of support my low back and my elbows and shoulders. So if you like that, do that. If you want to just push up the plank, that's a tough one, but you're welcome to it. And then can we put that together into practice? twice. So if you're new and home, this is called a vinyasa. You may want to just kind of drop to the knees like we did at the beginning of class and just watch how this is performed. So we're going to float the upper push-up position. That's the inhale. The exhale, knees or not, we're going to lower to our belly. Thank you, Marilyn. She's using her knees. Inhale, cobra or up dog for these kids in this room. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Remember in the, in the warrior tips, there's a, there's a uh, a lesson about the difference between cobra and up dog. So refer back to that if you're not sure. Do that once more. Inhale, plank position. And vinyasa, which means you just place the, pla the, the posture. Inhale, in this case, cobra in a special way. And the way it is with the inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. And that's really it, everybody. That's your yoga practice in a nutshell. As you take an inhale, shift the hips back. When you're ready, look forward and walk the feet to the hands. Inhale, climb onto your fingertips, pull your heart forward. Exhale, fold and enjoy your breath. Ah, the breath is a reprieve. For a moment, separate your feet hips distance. For another moment, bend your knees and clasp your elbow beneath your brow. Sean, if you don't mind, put your hands on your shin bones and support some of your body weight. Let's say, for example, if you're in a pose like Jeffrey over there and you fall forward and you feel like that's too much hamstring or too much low back stuff. See how she got her hands on her shin? She's going to take some of the weight into her arms so her low back and, and her hamstrings are supported. So either modification. You can go back the other way if it's comfortable for her. And everybody, take one more big inhale. As you exhale, let your hands fall to the floor. Watch this movement. It's a key movement in yoga for our style anyway. We're going to bend our knees and round our back and, and drop our head. And like a ragged and doll, one vertebra at a time, slowly and sure, rolling all the way up to standing. Keep those knees bent. Keep a little hinge in the hip until the last moment. The knees straighten, then the hips straighten, then the shoulders pull back as a cascading effect. And it happened gradually. Perfect. Slide the feet together, bring the hands to prayer position. So a lot of these, all these practices, just my philosophy, they start with something I call integrative series. And it's really a slow, easing into the practice. And then they usually start with these next things called Surya Namastara A's, which is just these sun salutations. And you'll get a grip of them. And they're to kind of heat the body and get us going. So they're going to demonstrate maybe three or four. First, do a little half salutation to everybody. Inhale, sweep the arms to the sky. And exhale, hinge and fall forward. Now, when you guys come back to the top, you're going to remind me of something. Inhale, glance out. You just practice that glancing out thing. Fold in. That glancing out is more with the chest and the eyes. Inhale, circle the arms. Glance out with the heart. Come on up. 
So we're gonna call that a bonus salutation, hands of prayer. Well, I didn't mention, right about now after that integrative series, we just take a moment to remind ourselves of our intention on why we're practicing. Because without that intention, the practice becomes mundane and arbitrary and without power, but embedded in a deep philosophical idea. And that idea is whatever you want it to be. It will carry you when muscle and willpower alone will not. So have that intention. If you, if you practice without intention, I bet you somewhere in the practice, it'll come back and bite you. So practice with an intention. And let's do two of those in a row that they just did. Inhale, swing the arms to the sky. Exhale, fall forward. You're doing such a service to yourself. Inhale, and your family and the people in your sphere of influence. Fold again. Circle the arms, come all the way to standing. It should be done with a sense of reverence. Hands to prayer. I probably, that's why that name prayer position is in this pose is quite often. Inhale, swing it up. Last one of those. Dip it, dive it. On the exhale, the breath is gone. Inhale, the spine is long. Exhale, the head is down. Come on up to standing. Inhale, sweep it up. So that's a good warm up. Hands of prayer. Now this next thing we do, you're familiar with, it's called vinyasa. Inhale, sweep it up. Take it forward and down. Take it out on an inhale. Take it back on an exhale plank. Knees are not lower to the floor when you're ready. Your breath, cobra, be it now or 10 seconds from now. Now or 10 seconds, downward facing dog. Probably not 10 seconds, probably two or three seconds, but you get the point. You move at your own cadence. Listen, as I call the practice out, I just have kind of this intuitive general cadence, but more specifically, you have a personal cadence. So if you notice you're a whole movement behind us, don't worry about it. If you're half a movement in front of us, you may be going a little quick. But if you're behind us, don't worry. I don't want to rush you. I wouldn't mind slowing you down, but I don't want to rush you. Inhale, push the hips back. Exhale, walk it forward. Inhale, get a little length. This is Miss Molly back here. Exhale, fold, usually, usually preceded by good golly. Inhale, sweep the arms, Miss Molly. Hands the prayer. Inhale, sweep the arms. Lead with the heart, fold in, squeeze the breath, gone. Inhale, pull it forward. See the repetition of it? Step back, vinyasa. Go through your flow here. You guys ever peeled an onion? It's one of those thin little layers at a time. One layer at a time. Every posture is one thin layer of the onion. We're just going to do one more of those. Don't worry if you think one more is, is too little. There's, we do a lot of these. These are the baseline of the practice. And I would never feel right doing a practice without them if it's not a restorative practice. Inhale, squeeze on back. Let's do one more. Exhale, walk or hop forward. Inhale, lengthen out. Well, you guys realize it takes back muscle. Inhale, circle the arms to lengthen out and press up. Also takes abdomen muscle. Hands to prayer. Also takes technique. Inhale, we're going to leave those behind. I hope you learned something from them. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, lengthen out. Step back, upper push-up, vinyasa. Inhale, cobra. You'll notice a couple of these guys will go deeper. It's a thing called up dog. Exhale, down dog. It's deeper and also it's more precarious because anytime you go deeper, you get more precarious. And when you go deeper, you got to get more focus. And that's typically why advanced students can claim the right to go deeper because they've earned it from focus, awareness, and experience. Take an inhale, draw your hips up again. Bend the knees, look forward. Walk or flirt. Now it looks the same, we're just gonna move on. Climb onto the fingertips. Now notice when you get your length out there, keep your length. 
and try to take the left leg with the weight shifted into the right foot. If you're way out in front of yourself, you'll probably have to come back a little bit. And if your hands are on the shins, you'll probably have to fold in and then lift the left leg up to the sky. I say the sky, that's kind of a misnomer, isn't it? Take the left leg straight back. So imagine if you look down in front of your body, you could see your left big toe. So that's, a, that's, a, that's kind of a barometer. You want to keep the hips squared. And so that's, listen, if you're brand new to yoga, this is extreme. I mean, this is, you know, in a, in a, in a simplistic class, this is extreme. Because the higher that left leg goes up, the deeper the stretch down the back of the right leg. The higher that right leg goes up, the more the low back potentially can work. So you gotta find a place that feels good. I think we call it tangible yet manageable. You feel it, it's distinct, you notice it. But you're thinking, okay, I can chill with this a little while. What I'd like you to do though, is I'd like you to bend the knee. Look at the back of your space. See way back here at Tamara's mat? She's gonna step all the way back, keep the fingertips on the floor. Now listen, if you got a knee issue, that was a lot of work, bending that knee, supporting your body weight, and taking the left leg back. I hope you're successful with that. If you weren't, don't worry, it'll come to you. Drop the left knee to the floor. Climb the hands onto the right knee, lift your chest up. See how Marilyn put a towel under her left knee? If you guys had a towel or a pillow even, if you got a really funky left knee, put a towel under there. Good thing is not to have that left knee uh, perpendicular right under the hip. You want the left knee back in a diagonal so you can lean into the length of the left quadricep versus right down into the kneecap. I would keep my hands here. Matter of fact, I'd walk my hands up my thigh bone. Something you're gonna learn a lot later is to lift those hip points off your right thigh. So the hip points lift, the tailbone drops. Let's keep the right hand where it is today and let's take the left arm up to the ceiling. Just the left arm. And notice, Tamara demonstrates it good, from that pinky toe, left foot, to pinky finger, left fingers. You know, a dancer, so she's gonna be a little dramatic in it. You know, she's a ballet dancer, so it's very dramatic. And Jeffrey here is a square dancer, so it's not quite as, it's not as quite as dr dramatic. But kind of dramatic, even on a dude. Breathing. Now, if you feel like, you know what, I got this. Then take the right arm up as well. <laughs> that's a big that's a big time stretch everybody if you've never done yoga you know how big time it is these guys don't think it's a big time stretch but we know better that's a big time stretch now when you bring your hands to the floor easily on either side of your right foot take a moment straighten that right leg oh my goodness that's a big time stretch left knee stays on the floor reach out with your left hands if your foot is available pull your toes back it may be too much down the road, we'll take this right foot off the front of our yoga mat for splits, but not today. You know, that's a good thing to think about in your practice. Everyone. A lot of times, I want you to say to yourself, not today. You know, just wait it out. Practice will come to you. If you say not today, it doesn't mean not tomorrow. It doesn't necessarily mean not today, but you're going you know, to hold back, restrain. Especially if you're new. If you're advanced at home, then you're nailing this already. It's no big deal. Rebend the right knee, come back into a lunge, tuck the back toes and straighten the left leg. You look like a sprinter. So your back toes are in a starting block. Now do the opposite, turn your back foot flat. So if you looked at your back foot, the outside edge of your back foot is flat and you can feel that. And the muscles around the left knee are starting to integrate. So you can actually wrap that left hip forward. Draw that right hip back. So all of a sudden you're pinning yourself into the midline and then climb onto the fingertips. And for this first one, don't come up vertical. Just put your hands on top of your right thigh bone and pull your chest forward so you got a little bit of space between your right thigh bone and your right waist. Now the weight's in the right heel, but guess what? The power's in the back leg. Run the arms down the ribs, palms turn towards the floor. That way the shoulders are anatomically correct. They're externally rotated, shoulders are drawn back. Last thing you want to be is a person walking down the street with internally rotated shoulders. Sinks your chest, your heart collapses, and your light turns off, and yuck. <laughs> Inhale, <clears throat> press up to First Warrior. Virabhadrasana is not for the weak at heart, as you'll find. I mean, if you knew the myth behind Virabhadrasana, it's fantastic. Both arms reach out 
full stretch. Let's get off that leg. Step back, upper push up, vinyasa slope. Inhale, cobra. Downward facing dog. Ah. Inhale, shift the hips back. You guys here walk very slowly, feet to hands, so they say you don't have to hop, they just walk right up there. Look at that. Just so pedestrian. Inhale, glance out, so respectful. Fold. We're lifting that. Now lift the leg behind you. Some of you remember I said keep the heart forward. It's a good technique, but if you can't reach your feet and get your hands down, you may have to bend the left knee, have the knee bent to get the hands down deep enough where you're balanced enough to lift the right leg. So that's all within reason. And then the same two warm up poses, a little bit of a split here. Some of these kids in the room are really holding back for you guys because they can take it way up. We're gonna have Tamara show you not what to do. Open those toes and take that leg to vertical. Right for us mere humans, that's like a yucky thing for our low backs and hamstrings, but for her, she's kind of freaky. Now, when you're ready, bend that left knee, step all the way back. Probably that leg didn't land back far enough for you, slide it on back, and then remember the knees in a diagonal as you drop the right knee to the floor, or the thighs in a diagonal. Climb the hands onto the left knee, lift the chest up. Now this time I kept you there for a long time last time. So again, just keep the left hand there if you want support. If you want to demonstrate, you can take both arms up, take both arms up. But don't you notice when both arms go up, you do not have that support anymore. Then all of a sudden you're at the mercy of the low back, you're at the mercy of gravity. If you're not advanced in this practice or if you're not accomplished in this practice or experienced in this practice, it can be too much. Please give yourself space to grow. One more inhale. As the hands come forward or down, the left leg is straight. As you straighten the left leg, you fold, keep the knee on the floor, reach out with the right hand, grab the toes, pull them in. Take three very deep breaths. And on each one of those three breaths, on the inhale especially, look for length, heart forward off the thigh. And every one of those exhales melt down in that left hamstring. Last two. Rebend the left knee. Remember, now you're in that crescent or that sprinter's lunge. While you're there, spin the back foot flat. Make sure you're off the tightrope. What does it mean being off the tightrope? Your right ankle, if you drew a straight line from your left heel to your right heel, your right heel does not cross, Jeffrey, to the left of your left ankle. You're on a tightrope. You want to be in a rectangle. Front foot in the front left corner of your rectangle, back foot in the back right corner of your imaginary rectangle. Run the arms down the ribs, pull the heart forward, pin that left hip in, work that right hip forward, firm that back leg, and then inhale, swoo, I'm starting to get excited. Inhale, sweep, energy starting to bubble. Take it to the floor, upper push up, vinyasa, let's move on. Inhale, cobra. Down dog. Now, in this style of yoga, we'll do this thing. This is a lot of Ashtanga-based stuff, you know, uh, lightly or suggestively. And their next series is Surya Namaskar B, which is just like the first series. It's more complex because it's got that, that daggone chair in it. So you guys get to learn the fierce pose coming up. Take a big inhale. Draw the hips back. Bend in the knees. Look forward. Walk or hop. Inhale, based on Shtanga's system, loosely is the one I'm saying. Exhale, too dogmatic for us, we like more freedom. Bend your knees, chair, sweep the arms up. That position, warrior tips, we have a lesson on chair pose. Stand up, prayer pose. Go back and revisit those, I, don't, I can't slow you down now. Inhale, bend the knees, sweep it up. Beautiful, Jeff. Fall forward, empty it out. Inhale, glance forward, step back, upper push up, vinyasa. Inhale, cobra. Let's not lift the leg. Down dog, we're just gonna step that right foot forward. Warrior one, you just rehearsed it. Inhale, doesn't have to be perfect, just awake. To the floor, upper push up through the vinyasa. 
Inhale the back bend. Don't get, or do get cocky up dog if you want it. Down dog, left foot steps deep, quick, efficiently. Inhale, master the back foot before you come up. Hands down, upper push up. Those at home or even in this room, sometimes we'll come up to Warrior One and we forgot to prepare the back foot and then we get up vertical with all the weight bearing down and we're trying to fix the back foot and it's too late. It's too late then. One. That's the first set, right? Two more sets. Inhale, squeeze back. Exhale, walk or hop forward. Inhale, now listen, do two more with us and we're gonna take a little bit of a break. Fold in. Here she comes, lightning bolt. Bend the knees, that's another name for chair. Stand up prayer. From the top, bend the knees back in the chair. Empty into the bottom. Inhale, glance out. If you're a big old stiff guy at home, step back up or push up vinyasa. It's funny about this practice. This is a tough practice for men. No matter who you are, you got a lot of professional athletes and it murders them. Down dog, right foot steps forward. Maybe it's the weight of the man's body or the bone structure, whatever it is, our old sports, we weren't dancers necessarily, hands down, vinyasa. I mean, you got guys who are dancers come to class. Yeah, that's a cake for those guys. Down, I mean, those guys struggle. Left foot steps forward. I got a point coming up here in a moment. Inhale, rise up. I mean, you see the girls practice. Hands down, generally speaking, is has this fluidity and easy grace to it. And it, it makes sense when they brought yoga to the West about 100 years ago, down, yo, down dog. You know, women in India weren't allowed to practice yoga back then. And the swamis and the gurus who brought yoga to the West, they said if it's gonna survive, it's gonna survive on the backs of the women in the West. And sure enough, but my point being, the women are so graceful and beautiful in the practice and the guys are, you know, big clutches like we are. But that person told me one day to practice, but they said, you practice like a girl. <laughs> and I took that as a huge compliment. I said, if you're a guy, if you practice like a girl, it's a good thing. Jeffrey over there practices like a girl. It's a good thing. It's this fluidity. It's this beautiful thing. Was that it? Was that two or three? We're going to do uno mas. That's Spanish. Inhale, hips up. Exhale, walk or float. In half your home, dudes, chicks dig grace. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, sweep it up. Stand up. Last chair of this class, bend your knees, take it high. Exhale, yo high. <laughs> Inhale, you don't practice like a chick, but you cook like one. Step back up or push up. That is so sexist. Shot or wrong, I'm gonna get an email on that one. Inhale, cobra. Down dog, right foot steps forward. Inhale, press it up. We have an edit machine. Take it to the floor, vinyasa, left side. Inhale, cobra, your last warrior one. Down dog, left foot steps forward. Inhale, rising. I make tigers out of tigresses out of tigers or whatever it is. Ep, ep, hands down, upper push up vinyasa. All right, we're going to move on. Inhale, cobra. I promise you guys a rest. Here comes one. Down dog. So let's see here. Uh, Jeffrey's right there. So when Jeff puts his knees down, he's going to keep his feet together and sit on his feet. The rest of you are going to drop the hero. Knees together, feet wide apart if your knees are healthy, and sit between your ankles. If you can see right here, with her between her ankles, the knee flexion is as deep as it can possibly be. That's at least 90 degrees, isn't it? I guess that's as far as it can get, 90 degrees. And with Jeff sitting on his feet, the knee flexion isn't quite as deep. It's probably like 85 degrees. Looks like 90. But you know, my point being, if you got any type of knee injury, sit on top of your feet or sit on a book or a couple books or if you're lucky enough to have a yoga block. If your knees are pristinely healthy and you got flexibility in your quadriceps, then sit between your feet. Now some of these guys can easily lay on their elbows and there's a couple of them can probably lay on their backs. And if you guys who can do that comfortably and with great skill do that and they can see there's another version. And we'll just take five, five breath rest. 
And believe it or not, this is kind of the way I meditate on my knees in this position. It's easier for me than sitting cross-legged. Let's take a moment of silence. I mean, it's a space for quietness. All right. If you're with us at home, you need a further rest. Stay here longer. For those of you on your back, don't pop up like a jack in a box. Take your time, walk on up. And when you're ready, tuck your toes. Let's take it back to down dog. Back to down dog. Everyone here, and if, if you're practicing with us, did you just notice when you went back to down dog that the, the knees, they opened up like a rose, didn't they? It's just so nice to open the knees. Now you got that extension through the knees. Feel that. Enjoy that shift of energy from a deep knee bent to extension of the knees. While you're there, bring the feet together. Take the right leg and lift it up to the sky. Now with the right leg up, work that left heel towards the floor and then enjoy the deepening of the extension of the right knee. And while you do that, push. Sarah's fight now, trying to turn that right hip down for her. Push to the right heel and open up the back of the right knee. And then just one time today, bring the knee to the forehead and coil and take the leg back up, and we're gonna do the only crescent of the class, step the right foot all the way through, press up the crescent. When you get there, pause. It's just like, it's just like we did a moment ago with the knee on the floor, is in the same motion. And then open up to warrior two for a second. Oh, steady standby warrior two. I know in these classes and in the Warrior Tips, I'll be talking a lot about the transition from Crescent to Warrior Two or Warrior One to Warrior Two. It's a necessary skill to have, so look into that. Five deep breaths in Warrior Two. We won't be here forever. There's times in Warrior Two we hold it till the cows come home. This is just three more breaths. Two more breaths. Straighten the front leg, bring the hands to the waist and turn your 10 toes towards this wall over here. Pigeon toe your feet so your knees and toes are on the same plane. Inhale, lift your chest a little bit. There's a micro back bend there if you wanted it. Fall all the way forward. There's a distinct forward bend there. When you get down, reach out with your fingers, grab your big toes, pull your heart forward. If your big toes are out of the question, don't worry about it. Keep your hands on the floor. If you're at home and this is like, whoa, there's no way I can get down to the floor, just no way. Put your hands on your shin bones. If it's still too much for you, put a chair in front of you and lean and lean your forearms against the chair to rest. You know, like the base of the chair where your bottom goes. I know, when you see these poses in the magazine or you see them in yoga, or you see them on some person practicing, they didn't show up like this. It, take, it takes, and if, if they showed up flexible, healthy, young, and they still weren't at this level. It, it took them a while to get there. So don't, don't compete and compare, for goodness sakes. Stay where you are, and just take the left hand and grab the outer right ankle. Now, if you're having a hard time grabbing the out of the foot, maybe you can go to the lateral side and get the foot, you'll have a better chance, maybe. If not, just walk towards that leg. Maybe you get about a third of the way there, and then you find, man, I was a stretch there. Then just hold that stretch. Don't force it the rest of the way in. And take three breaths. and take two breaths. Now, since you're at the right foot, we're just gonna stay there. Release the tension of the legs, spin up on your left tippy toes, turn your right foot out like a lunge. Just like that lunge we did earlier. Let's do our first real twist. Now, we're gonna give you another skill here, it's this twisting lunge, so let's, let's set it up really softly at first. Let's bring the, keep the back leg straight and strong. Left hand is right under left shoulder. If you're like me, you can't get that palm flat and be comfortable, you can be on your fingertips. Take the right hand, place it on top of the right thigh. Use the right arm as leverage to turn the right chest over the right thigh. Use the left arm to encourage the left chest to turn into the right knee, inner right knee, thereabout. And then when you feel like you're ready, float the right arm up to the ceiling. And we'll just stay with the simple version of this pose. There's a lot of different versions. We'll stay in a simple expression of rotation. 
And while you're there, breathe into all this difficulty. And it's difficult, right? The lungs are a little bit twisted up. The, uh, the torso, the spine is rotating. You're sitting down in those heavy hips, sitting down that tired left arm. So it's frustrating sometimes. It's difficult sometimes, challenging sometimes. Ultimately, well worth it. Take one more inhale. Right hand down. Step back if you can to plank. Hold that for a second. Hold that thought. Push back the down dog. Now, if you notice what we did, we just skipped a vinyasa, that chaturanga cobra thing. And watch, let's be real quiet for a second. Let's, let's see. See, the, the, the building didn't fall down. So you can skip those things whenever you feel like you need to. Feet together, take the left leg, float it up to the ceiling. Step the left foot between the hands, spin the back foot flat, straighten the front leg, and turn all 10 toes towards the other wall. When you get out there, this time we've been there, done that, take the right hand, grab the outer left ankle. Once again, if the left ankle is way into other side, Ryan, if the left ankle is out of your zip code, just go towards the left ankle. And then once you get into a stretch, hold the stretch until it becomes tangible. And then manage it for five. Four, and you're still deep and free with that breath. Three, still pulling the breath to the very bottom of the lungs. Two. Now stay out there at the left foot and spin up onto your right tippy toes. Turn the left foot out 90 degrees. Remember, place the right hand down and this time just take the left arm up or brace it against the thigh if you want that kind of preliminary work. You know, there's always building the post from the ground up and there's a bunch of different steps. We could probably give you 50 more steps to do in this one single posture. Just take the steps, we'll add things to it as we go. Take one more inhale, open her up. Left hand down. Remember last time we didn't do the vinyasa optional. Step back to plank, vinyasa or not. Vinyasa or not. Cobra, good. Like four or five people skipped the vinyasa. Brilliant. Downward facing dog. Let's leave that stuff behind. Take a big inhale, shift your hips back. Bend your knees, look forward. Walk or float the feet to the hands. Inhale, lengthen out, fold in. Come on up with a flat back. Inhale, circle the arms and press up to standing. Bring at the center. Now reach down and pick up the left knee and squeeze it into the chest. I want to do a little balancing. I told you in the beginning of class, a versatile warrior had just about all the components of the practice as far as category of practices. Probably the only one we won't have is a, a strict inversion. But the rest of them we'll, we'll cover. Back bends, hip openers, things of that nature. Balancing poses. Speaking of balancing poses, let's take a tree position. Left foot pulls into the groin of the right foot. Jeff, hold that foot there for a second. Notice how Jeff is holding the foot in place. Hold the foot in place if you like. Notice how Tamara's not. So for me, sometimes that foot wants to slip out from beneath me. And then Jeff, if you don't want to hold it anymore, it's all good. Bring the hands to prayer position, steady. And for today, let's just hold it at prayer. Lots of more things we can do here. Let's not just hold prayer. Oop, 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 oop. She's weebling, but she's wobbling. Now we're going to this interesting. You've been doing you've been doing chair all day. So what you're going to do is you're just going to wrap that left knee. Oops. Oops, around the right knee. Look how my legs are wrapped in eagle. We call this eagle. And the left leg is on top, so I'm gonna wrap the left elbow underneath. Left elbow underneath. And then notice how the, the, the elbows wanna drop down into the belly. We're gonna keep lifting the elbows up. Even though we sit down in that right hip, right knee, right ankle flexion, and finally, Lay the belly on the thigh. This is fairly an advanced pose, I would think, for you guys, especially if you're home. It's probably impossible. I know that. We'll just kind of throw it into a mix and see what you got with it. Let's do this. Let's stand straight up. Squeeze the left knee back into the chest and set the left foot on the floor. Pretty good. 
Inhale, sweep the arms up to the sky. Let's do a vinyasa just to clean the slate. Fall all the way forward. We'll come back and do the other side after we move through this flow. Inhale, heart forward. Step back up or push up, vinyasa lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Take an inhale, shift the hips back. Look forward, walk or hop the feet. Inhale, glance out, Miss Patty. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, chair out of nowhere. Sweep your arms up. Stand up, prayer position. Pick up the right knee, squeeze it into the chest. You know the couple poses we're doing. Your option of tree position, pull the heel in. There is a warning I'd like to give you. If you, can't, if you can't get the foot above the knee, the inner knee, I'll do the bad version. Foot against the inside of my knee. If that's bad, it's like I'm trying to kick my knee out to the left. So I wanna bring my foot up where it's more stable. If I can't get it up where it's more stable, I'll just put it down on the ankle. See that pose? That's tree pose too. You just don't have the difficulty getting the foot all the way up for five breaths. Three breaths. And now if that was easy, we'll just, add, we'll just throw a cherry bomb into your campfire. Wrap the right leg tightly around the left leg. Wrap the right elbow tightly underneath the left elbow. Now, if you wanna stay vertical, stay vertical. I failed to mention it on the other side, but if you wanna fold your eagle into the nest, lay your belly on the thigh. Breathing for three. There is very determined to nail this pose. You got it. I thought you didn't have it, so I came over, and then I came over, you had it. So I'm not gonna waste my trip, I'm gonna stay here now. Good. Last two breaths. And as we stand up, just bring the feet to the floor, sweep the arms to the sky, big inhale. And let's get our butts to the floor, fall all the way forward. Inhale, glance out. Step back your last time, vinyasa the last time, lower slowly. The greatest thing about the vinyasa, the last one is, is the last one. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. You know how you get to deserve the last one? It's because you went through all the other ones. Drop to the knees, cross the ankles behind you, let's sit our bottom over our feet. Ooh. Isn't that true, everybody? Asper asparagus before dessert. You know, if you don't eat your asparagus, the dessert's not so sweet. Let's lay on our backs, everybody. Lay on our backs. One time when I was about nine years old, my mother found a year supply of asparagus under the flower pot. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do a little ab work and I'm gonna talk to you about the ab work while these guys do it. So bend your knees. We're gonna do something simple called crunches. Just so you know, crunches are less efficient than a lot of things we do in yoga, such as arm balances and knee to elbows and plank form planks and things like that that you're getting introduced to. Those things are much more profound because those things work from the transverse abdominis, the deeper versions of the ab muscle. The six pack you see on top, they're superficial. There's not much power in those at all. They just hold organs into place. But beneath the organs, closest to the spine, that's where the core strength comes in. But we'll do a few of these because you guys sometimes tend to like them, but I want you to do them in a yogic fashion. So we're gonna keep the knees bent. We're gonna interlace the hands behind the head. So on an exhale, just lift the shoulder blades off the floor. There's two movements. The forehead goes forward, up, and then forward. But not, very, not where your chin tucks, and then drop it. So do another one. Exhale, elbows stay up. It's an up and forward motion, but the forward motion is less than the up motion, if that makes sense. And lower back down. Now they're gonna do 30, so that's two. You guys do 28 more. Y'all hold, and you at home, hold their feet to the fire. Don't let them do those quick little manic ones. And if you only got 30, then you're not gonna waste any of them. If you're doing 200 of them, you're just gonna be cranking through these things mindlessly. So our intention with ab work is not to be punitive. Our intention for ab work is to strengthen the abs just like we strengthen the legs and the hamstrings and the biceps and the quadriceps and every other muscle group I can think of. If you want, to, if you want abs, like my friend Jeff over there, i show you my abs, but uh, yeah, no. But if you did, diet, 99% of it. 
cardiovascular work is more than the 1%, but not as much as the diet. So spot reducing does not work. The first place, the last place, you're always like, I can't lose that last five pounds. Guess what? That's the first five pounds that, go, that gets there. You know, it's not like I got five, I gained five pounds of, of fat on my biceps. No, you gain it wherever you gain the fat. How many reps is that for you guys? It doesn't matter, keep doing them. <laughs> Deep breathing. Now we're gonna give them a little bit of a break. So they're gonna stop crunching even if they're short of 30. And they're gonna do a right side pigeon, uh, thread the needle, right side thread the needle. If nothing else, it gives them a break while I, I yap continue. This is a pet peeve of mine. Because people come to yoga to get in some type of physical condition. It's an inherent benefit of the practice. Given that yoga teaches you something, yoga doesn't tell you anything, yoga teaches you. It teaches you that, you know what? I can't do my work because my stomach's in the way. And we're not talking about vanity, we're talking about uh, functionality. I can't do so, I can't touch the floor, I can't do this, I can't do that. Yoga doesn't say lose weight. It may teach you you need to lose weight. So it's not about losing weight for the sake of vanity. It's just that the, it, the weight kind of gets in the way. I'll never, if a student's heavy, I don't care. They can still practice magnificently. They may decide to lose weight because it's hindering their practice and they may, from awareness, change their food habits. Uh, let's do, uh, let that go, that up. Take both legs up to the sky, straight up. Yoga will cure, I think about everything. One of my favorite teachers is Anna Forrest. And they asked her one time, they, and she was a heroin junkie and an alcoholic and the list goes on. They asked her, you know a good 12 step program? She goes, yeah, Surya Namaskar B. Which is 12 movements in the flow, right? Take both arms straight up to the ceiling. Separate your feet about as wide as your shoulders. Separate your feet as wide as your shoulders. You see your right pinky toe? Reach up and touch your right pinky toe with your left pinky finger. And go the other way. Uh-oh. And go back and forth. And just don't go fast. Go slow. Do it yogic. Those are hard. Some of you are adaptable. You'll think to yourself, I'll bend my knees and bring my foot down to my hand. That's ingenious, but that's not what we're looking for. Keep those legs up there and go up and get it. So my point is, do not blow your neck out. Do not blow your low back out, crunching through mindless numbers of sit-ups. Matter of fact, some people I know who are the most lean people I've ever seen, I go, how many sit-ups you do? I ain't done sit-ups since the eighth grade. You know what they do though? They surf, they run, they play basketball, they're active all the time, they eat well, they enjoy life. Don't punish yourself. Drop the, sh drop the sugar, drop the white flour, drop the wheat, start there. I bet you do those three things those three things will change your life and you won't even suffer you won't even notice it yeah you have some cravings you have to you have to deal with it first withdrawal symptoms but ultimately once you've conquered those withdrawal systems your life will change for the better not change enhance it's already good chain sides uh pigeon other side pigeon other side So in this first class with you, I've talked straight to you lots. I mean, I hope to leave you alone in the future. I just want to get those points out along with the gathering class light. I think you're up to speed with what we're trying to do here. And enjoy your next 11 classes and the rest of the program. Those of us, we're about finished. We're going to take uh, a bridge, set the feet on the floor. Feet are about hips distance apart. If you never did bridge at home, if you got some type of neck issues, I want you to be super careful. If you got a low back issue, I want you to be careful. Bridge sounds just like it sounds. It's just like it sounds. We're gonna press into our feet, lift our hips up. If you have the availability in your shoulders, you're gonna swing your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. If you don't have the availability, Ryan, show them. Grab the outside edges of your yoga mat, reach underneath there. And then you can use the mat as leverage to pull See, you can use the mat to kind of pull your shoulders underneath you. You would think the bridge is the space between your butt and the floor. The, the bridge is the space between your shoulder blades. And then try to keep your chin lifted off your chest. We'll do two of these. The first one, you just get to know the pose. Take one more inhale and then lower her down. 
And don't squeeze your knees in. So we don't like to counter back bends like this until we're finished with these back bends. So we'll do one more and then we'll counter it. Counter pose means you do a back bend and then you do something that folds the spine. So extension to folding. All right, let's do one more, shall we? Press into the feet, lift the hips up. And either grab the hands or grab the yoga mats. Full bridge. Not Urvda, not the fancy stuff. We'll get there. Take one more inhale, lift it. Come on down. When you get all the way down, squeeze the knees into the chest. That's a counter pose. But do those counter pose gently. It's a change of direction for your spine. You know where you get hurt in your spine? Is when you change the direction of the curve of the spine. So that was a change of direction, so it has to be approached slowly, like a curve, like a sharp turn. Happy baby, happy baby. Is this, is this not aptly named Happy Baby? I used to do a pose called Half Happy Baby, and I got depressed about half of a baby. So, <laughs> baby, happy baby. Let's draw both knees into the chest. Miss Tatiana is going to be very soft with her twist. We're going to take both knees. Now, first, don't bring the knees to the chest. Let your knees drift down by your hips. So your, your thigh bones are vertical to the ceiling. And then take both knees to the left. And you may have to scoot that left hip underneath you and kind of roll onto the left flank. Look out to the right side of the wall. If you thought about that right arm, if you're going to be consistent, the right palm turns up versus turning down. Mellow. Come back to the center, change your twist to the other side. And that, as they say, is that. Draw both knees into the chest. Give yourself a finishing hug. Take a big inhale and let it go. Stretch your legs out and flop it open. The time is invested, the effort is spent. The rewards and the benefits are just now being realized. Listen, we kept you a little bit, a little long onto your mats today. Hopefully it wasn't too much for you. Work your way up to it. These guys are toasted. All they need is a little butter and jam. They're finished. You're finished. Stay there as long as you can. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for practicing your first indoor class with us, Versatile Warrior. Welcome to Yoga Warrior 365. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Namaste.